We're here at the HDMI booth here at uh, Computex 2017, and this year you uh, you're launching HDMI 2.1. Yes, so uh, we're here at Computex 2017. My name is Rob Tobias. I'm the president of HDMI Licensing Administrator. We're here announcing HDMI 2.1, which is the latest and greatest specification for HDMI. So there's been HDMI 2.0, 2.0A, 2.0B, right? Now it's, this is the next step. That's correct. So this is a major step for HDMI. All of those others you mentioned, uh, 2.0 brought us to 4K60. Uh, the A and the B brought us HDR and a few minor fixes. Now we're on to some major changes. And uh, so we're talking about new cables also. This is 48 gigabit per second, and we're talking up to 10K. This is 8K and 10K and all these crazy high specs. So that's a huge jump in performance. Uh, we went from 18 gigabit per second, which is the current 2.0 spec, to 48 gig. Huge leap in performance. And we, to do that, uh, we had brand new cables designed, so there'll be a brand new HDMI cable uh, to carry these speeds, to support the resolutions up to 8K and even up to 10K. So, uh, in, without compression, it supports 8K60, right? That's correct. So, at the, the highest rates, native is 8K60, and you add on a light, uh, visually lossless compression, we can get up to 10K120. And so there's going to be some computer monitors that do 5K and 10K. So it's not just 4K and 8K. It's also yeah, 5 and 10. That's correct. So on the TV side, uh, the next jump after 4K is 8K. But monitors, you already see some 5K monitors out there. And uh, soon you will see even 10K monitors for very, very high resolution. And uh, there's something called dynamic HDR. That's like HDR, but even more smart. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head there. So uh, HDR is one of the uh, highlights of this last year's CES, where it was called high dynamic range. It really makes the brights brighter and the darks darker and all the detail and colors that surround it. Uh, today we have HDR10, which is a static HDR, which allows you to set it at the beginning of a movie. Now with dynamic HDR, it improves that so you can do scene by scene or even if you want frame by frame. So you get a really huge contrast improvements, color performance improvements. Really you're gonna notice this in your 4K movies that come out in the future. So instead of everything being HDR, it's scene by scene, frame by frame. It's like uh, adaptive. Yeah, so you might have one scene that's at night in the woods and you wanna see the detail but then the next scene is, is daylight or a big explosion. And you don't want that with these thousand nit displays, you don't want that blinding you. You still want to be able to see the detail in the very bright scenes and the very dark scenes. Dynamic HDR allows the display to change dynamically from scene to scene. And then there's something called, uh, is this variable, kind of like variable frame rate? Uh, variable refresh rate. So this is more for the games where it can go up and down in terms of frame rates? And so that allows for gaming systems, whether it's a game console or whether it's a high performance gaming PC, to have what's called variable rate refresh. And so there, uh, once the scene is complete, it's immediately sent to the display. So today you usually hear about 60 frames a second. Well, this can do as fast as the display can receive the frames and display them. What that does is it reduces the tearing you see and it improves, uh, especially for these high performance fast twitch games, uh, you will see the um, motion happen much more quickly and f more fluidly. And then there's something called eARC and does, that has to do with audio, right? And uh, so those who are familiar with the uh, home theater concept, AVR sound bars, HDMI has what's called audio return channel. So it allows audio to be sent over the HDMI cable back to the AVR or to a soundbar. Uh, currently it supports up to SpeedIF, which gives you the surround sound, 5.1, 7.1. Now we have very high bitrate audio, we also have object audio. And so the enhanced ARC improves that performance and supports these new audio formats from the likes of Dolby and DTS. Will that 
require a new recording of the content instead of saying uh, front left back left it's gonna say up in the left corner there's a helicopter right and you follow it to the right and then it's yeah. going to be a whole new format. Yeah, so this object audio is very exciting uh, development in the whole realm of audio. And so movies will be encoded with these new audio formats from Dolby and DTS, like Dolby Atmos. And what it does is it encodes an object and it'll say, helicopter, you're in the upper left. Now move right at this speed. And then the audio processing system, whether it's the audio video receiver, or a sound bar or some other uh, processing, it could even be your headphones, will know how to render that. And it can make the best out of the performance of your audio system. So you might put the speakers a little bit randomly in the room and it'll, it will could be calibration and then it's a different kind of data in terms of telling you how to render the 3D space of the audio. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it there. So nobody sets up their speakers perfectly, and so you can have an audio processing unit that can help determine how far speakers are away from the optimal point, and then it knows how to render uh, each of these sound objects appropriately. Does that require a lot of bandwidth? Because you have these huge cables. Is that a part of it? Well, audio, it, it, audio is never as bandwidth is consuming as video. However, we've had to increase the amount of bandwidth available to the audio to support these high bit rates in these object audio formats. So these new cables, are when are they coming out? Uh, 48 gigabit per second cables. Well, we're waiting now for the spec to be delivered to the marketplace. We anticipate that will happen in August. Uh, once that happens, the cable manufacturers are already, uh, those who are a member of the HDMI forum, are already working on prototypes and they expect to have cables out in the very near future. So this is, we're in the summer already, right? And this summer something's happening with HDMI 2.1? And so uh, at CES we, had, we announced that the spec would come out summer 2017. And so we're, we're entering the summer and we now think that it'll be August when the specification is available for developers. So it's still tweaking the specifications? There might be something added or removed or? Well, they're really in final draft. They're just working on comment resolution. So there will not be any new features added or subtracted. It's really just fine tuning the specification. So this year, before the end of the year, there'll be devices with HDMI 2.1 and cables. I suspect there will be. And that means, uh, 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 and how does it improve with, uh, with 4K? So there's 4K, uh, for example, 120, that was already supported? Uh, well, HDMI 2.0 went up to 4K 60. 4K 60. And so now all it's of doubling. these, now we're doubling it, tripling it, quadrupling it for all these other uh, higher performance resolutions. So that means we, we might be seeing some, uh, for example, 4K 120, that might provide really amazing TVs, right? Uh, that, that would. Exactly. Because uh, um, it, it's just going to be smoother. Yeah, it, uh, the higher frame rates really help with high motion rates. So if you're watching sports, you see somebody run across the field, you may see blurriness. Uh, that'll help to uh, reduce the blurry effect. And the, the Tokyo Olympics 2020, I think they say they want to do 8K 120. So yes. you support it. So NHK, which is uh, the broadcaster, uh, broadcaster in, to, in uh, Japan, uh, their plan is for the 2020 Olympics, broadcast then in 8K. And uh, so it's uncompressed 8K 60, that means 8K 100, 120 is uh, compression, right? And what compression do you use? It'll use what's called DSC, uh, which is a specification that is a visually lossless, can go uh, two to one, three to one, a very light compression. Uh, and for most humans, we would not be able to detect any loss in the video quality.